the obvious bias in the crooked Hillary Clinton email investigation which was shown by the now-embattled former FBI Director James Comey, his right-hand man Andrew McCabe and the now-disgraced bureau agent Peter Strzok who sent over 10k texts to his mistress with messages showing disdain towards candidate Trump while pledging to not let crooked Hillary lose the 2016 election have all made incalculable damage to the federal law enforcement agency's reputation, damage which is unrepairable. Up until now the fallout has gone as far as to implicate the FBI in the now infamous work of fiction which is the Fusion GPS anti-Trump dossier which has led McCabe and James Baker to either announce early retirements or to be reassigned. However now, Someone has already been killed over this very controversial move and there's only one person who had this particularly damning information on Hillary. She thought he was long gone and that she had gotten away with murder, yet again, but her worst nightmare just surfaced. Looks like one of the biggest and most recent sudden death mysteries may have just been solved. Fox News reports. An attorney for the co-founder of opposition research firm Fusion GPS revealed during a closed-door interview this summer with congressional investigators that somebody's already been killed as a result of the publication of the anti-Trump dossier. The statement was contained in a 312-page transcript of Fusion GPS co-founder Glenn Simpson's August interview with committee investigators released unilaterally Tuesday by Senate Judiciary Committee ranking member Dianne Feinstein, Democrat California. The release itself provoked controversy, with an aide to Senate Judiciary Committee Chairman Chuck Grassley, Republican Iowa, calling it confounding for Feinstein to drop the transcripts in the middle of an ongoing investigation. Among the many revelations in the document, though, is the claim from Simpson's attorney that someone died because the dossier, which was commissioned by Fusion GPS, was publicly released. He wants to be very careful to protect his sources, attorney Josh Levy said during the August 22 Senate Judiciary Committee interview of his client. Somebody's already been killed as a result of the publication of this dossier and no harm should come to anybody related to this honest work. Levy didn't elaborate on who was killed. The website BuzzFeed first published the dossier online last January, airing its unverified allegations about President Trump's connections with Russia. The dossier was written by former British MI6 agent Christopher Steele. Fusion GPS, which hired Steele, got funding from the Clinton campaign and Democratic National Committee. Trump has long derided the dossier as politically motivated, and several GOP-led committees are investigating whether it formed the basis for the FBI's initial investigation into Russian election interference. Feinstein said in a statement she released the transcript to combat misinformation about the interview. The innuendo and misinformation circulating about the transcript are part of a deeply troubling effort to undermine the investigation into potential collusion and obstruction of justice, Feinstein said in a statement. The only way to set the record straight is to make the transcript public. Although the attorney isn't naming any names of who has already been killed, the only person who is suspected of having info on this particular dossier was Seth Rich. Rich was murdered in Washington, D.C., on July 10, 2016, of what's being said as a robbery gone deadly. However, a lot of information seems to suggest that cause is nearly impossible. Now, with this latest statement out, the pieces to the puzzle of his suspicious death are starting to come together. This latest assertion that someone has now been killed over the dossier could and should very well be the smoking gun we've been waiting for, which Trump knew was coming. By now it's starting to be very clear that Democratic National Committee staffers' death was the cause of some foul play. So clear that we can now add the former candidate and Speaker of the House Newt Gingrich's name to the list of those calling for an official investigation into the so-called botched robbery which ended in the murder of Rich. Gingrich explained, 
We have this very strange story now of this young man who worked for the Democratic National Committee, who apparently was assassinated at four in the morning, having given WikiLeaks something like 53,000 emails and 17,000 attachments. Nobody's investigating that, and what does that tell you about what's going on? Because it turns out, it wasn't the Russians, it was this young guy who, I suspect, was disgusted by the corruption of the Democratic National Committee. He's been killed, and apparently, nothing serious has been done to investigate his murder. So I'd like to see how Robert S. Mueller III is going to define what his assignment is. It's currently being reported that the real source of the Democrat Party email leaks was never the Russians. It was actually the 27-year-old Democrat staffer Seth Rich who strongly favored the socialist Bernie Sanders over crooked Hillary Clinton in the Democrat primaries. When he learned of the shenanigans and rigging that was taking place against Senator Sanders he managed to get proof of what the DNC was up to. He then went on to report his findings anonymously to the website WikiLeaks. Julian Assange has practically confirmed this whole narrative. What's even stranger is how the Rich family was calling for an investigation. After the official investigation turned up the narrative that it was just a robbery gone wrong. A robbery where no belongings were taken. Not his expensive watch, wallet or even the phone he was using to talk to his girlfriend at the moment of the robbery. Interestingly enough they have now changed their tunes and what no investigation nor mention of the mystery behind Seth's death. If I didn't know better I would start to believe they were threatened or something of the sort.